Hi guys, Andrew here from GuardFrom.net. In this tutorial, I will show you how to insert cutout people into your architectural visualization render. There are many tutorials about this topic out there, but I do it in a little different way. So if this topic is new for you, you can learn how to do it easily and correct. And if you already mastered this skill, you can borrow some techniques and tricks from me. So let's go. Here I have an exterior visualization and I would like to insert some people into this space. So first I will show you how to do it the hard way and then I will show you my techniques for fast and accurate work. I have this guy here and I want to insert him into this space. So the first way would be to guess the scale of this person just by your guts or comparing to some other dimensions in the render like windows or doors. But most people do it by finding the horizon line. I will quickly go through that. So now I'm drawing the perspective lines of elements in the space which are parallel to each other. They will meet in one point. And these two lines will also meet at one point. But this is going to be a different point because they are parallel to each other, but they are not parallel to the lines from the building on the right. And now I will draw the horizon line which goes through all these points. So the horizon line is always at the level of viewer eyes. In this case on the level of the camera. Everything above this line is higher than the camera and everything below this line is placed under the camera. My camera is placed at 165 centimeters above the ground so this is the eye level of uh, average male person so now i can place the characters keeping in mind that their eye level should be at the level of horizon of course they can be taller or shorter it doesn't matter where the feet are as long as the head is at the horizon level so that was a very simple scenario but here is when this method starts to create problems. Now I would like to place this person at the balcony and I have to somehow find the right height for her. Let's say she's going to stand here and now I would like to drop her position to the ground level, find the right height and move her up. And in case of a very high building, the characters get smaller too, so it gets more complicated. And this is another example, my camera is looking down. So to create the horizon line, I needed to make my canvas bigger and divide it to the right chunks, which are the height of the person. So as you can see, this method can be very time consuming and not always will give you right results. So now I will show you the easy method I use. I plan places where my characters are going to stand and I put their placeholders, which have a height of an average person. For more cameras, you can put the placeholders on different layers, so you can turn them on and off as you need. Now I will quickly render the image, which I will use for placing people into the final render. I turned the GI off and I set all the settings to very low values. I have a preset for that and I render such an image. As placeholders I use cylinders so I have information about light and shadow on the character as well. If the rendering takes too long you can override the scene's shaders with some simple material. Also it's enough to render this image in a resolution lower than your final render. Now I add this render as a layer to Photoshop and I always have the right height for the characters and on top of that I have information about how the shadow should look like. So now I will put the characters into the image and my placeholders are 1 meter 70 centimeters high so I can scale characters to be taller or shorter than 1.7 meters, so not all of them have the same height. Now I'm creating shadows based on the cutout people. I try to match the shadows dropped by placeholders 
and I add some distortion to them like narrowing or skewing because the shadows don't have exactly the same shape as people casting them. They're just a projection of a 3D shape on a two dimensional surface. For now I don't care about the color of the shadows, I just want to get the shapes correctly. In case of the shadow of this lady, part of it is casted on the wall so it mimics its shape. Basically the shadow goes vertical from the place where it hits the wall and the part casted on the ground is distorted accordingly to the angle of the flat surface. So I cut the shadow in the place where it meets the wall and put together the right shadow from these two parts. And I have the placeholder shadow as a hint how it should look like. Now I will merge the, all the shadow layers to one so I modify their look and color together. I turn off the placeholder layer because I don't need it for now. Now I'm cutting part of the shadow in the render to have a reference for my shadow's color and darkness. I copy it to a new window and I apply blur average filter so I have the clean shadow color. If I picked up the color from the image it could give me various colors since there is always some noise in the render. Now I will set the color of my shadows. First I will apply filter blur average and this is only to get some solid color on the shadows. I could bring it to 100% black but in Photoshop it's harder to change the color of pure black to another color than just using any hue. And now I will copy the hue of the shadow from the average sample I created before. I will use option match color in Photoshop. I move the shadow layer under the cutout people layers. I do some quick modifications of the shadows. These are the things I noticed after changing the color of the shadow. And now I need to lower the opacity of the shadow so it mixes with the material underneath it. So now I make a reference for the final shadow look and I adjust the darkness and saturation of the shadow. The hue is correct since I taken it from the sample earlier. I finally decided to set it to a color a little lighter than the reference since the characters are in open space. This is the final effect for this part of the tutorial. The shadows near characters legs need some more work. I will do it in the next part. I will also show you how to paint the shadows on the characters and share more tips and tricks. So stay tuned and see you later.